like woke space they get a lot of flack for that but also they get castigated for being like tories with red ties right yeah um somewhere in in between those those two places is where labor that's the space that labor have inhabited i'm curious to see like what what do you think they are likely to be able to achieve if and when they get into power because that's going to be the pivot cool. point right and yeah you sounded frustrated with them when you and i were chatting you were like i just want them to fucking you know help actual people's situations instead of banging on about things like this stuff is nonsense that stuff doesn't matter focus on what is actually affecting people and i agree like so when they get into power this is a really long question i'm so sorry uh <laughs> when they get into power what would you like to see them actually do um it's all right i'm, I'm also i totally ask super long questions all the time mm. um what would i like to Thank see you. them do um the 2017 labor manifesto in as close as is possible right that is the the, the best like because i can give you lots of specific examples about things that i would personally want or things that like but but that is the most comprehensive like document that i have ever seen that came close to addressing what i see to be quite a lot of the systemic issues within the united kingdom mm -hmm. now people could say that like it's a little bit too like it gives the state a little bit too much power in some areas, but ultimately, all those places where where they had where we're saying, okay, you know, you, you, the state shouldn't be involved in energy, water, public transport, any of these things. It's like we're already paying for it, yeah. right? And the only difference is that the money gets farmed off to offshore corporations. Money gets like fucking siphoned and funneled off along the way to the lawyers to the accountants into the tax havens and then into some fucking through like a billion different um like uh shell corporations and eventually to some like subsidiary of like <laughs> circo that will provide the shittiest version of whatever public service that you could possibly provide with zero war contracts no benefits to um like the employees that they're milking until they can find someone stupid enough or poor enough to do it even cheaper yeah and ultimately like it's 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 like a systemic rot where we've just allowed like corporate capital to inhabit all of these government like services and institutions and the 2017 labor manifesto went some way to attempting to remove that massive 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 parasite mm. upon the state um and so that that's like if you want like a broad answer like that's what i would say it's a really important point to, to nail home isn't it that the state still picks up the tab even when you privatize these things and it like it's not necessarily it like sometimes it's in an immediate sense in that you'll have privatized uh formerly public so like a train line for example used to be mm. publicly owned it was uh, funded by taxpayers and then somebody it probably in a tory government was like Do you know what let's privatize this we'll give it to our mates um and you think okay privatize so that takes some weight off the taxpayer we don't have to fund it anymore well no like you're not completely off the hook there we're still subsidizing like a lot of that there's still loads of tax money that's going into running rail and i think then less immediate is this thing that you're alluding to which is a really important thing to, to expose people to, is that if you make the general public suffer through lower wages because you privatised the thing, and now that company have to pay shareholders, they have to make a profit, um, they have to pay their staff less. Well, now those the staff members who are earning less, maybe now they're pushed into a bracket where they have to get universal credit. So the state then having to come to the rescue of these people you're not really saving any fucking money you're actually just increasing poverty right the other key thing is this is this the, the financialization of like the entire um like corporate architecture that that you're farming all of these things out to is is through because they're all set up up as like tax haven based entities yeah. where things funnel through a million different sh shells in order to get the most tax benefit but every time you jump through all these hoops like accountants lawyers um like trust holders they're all taking their little fees yeah and that's just like funneling it offshore and then phew, gone never to be seen again mm. and instead of that money just going straight from the, the taxpayer's purse to a government funded like whatever however you want to call it like a like a like a government run or a government owned privately run corporation 
um, which is which is like how a lot of these things used to be set up. So it was like government owned. Um, money went back into the thing or returned to the taxpayer, mm. and and then people had stable jobs. And you know if the service was was shit because like the local government was doing a bad job of running it. Mm. Do you know what you could do? You could fucking vote them out and be like, <laughs> sort this shit out.